So one of the biggest things about the cinematography or even photography industry are the usage of drones. Also, a lot of hobbyists have drones as well and you know, people who just wanna fly something, take some nice photos when they go traveling. DJI is probably one of the best companies that have brought out the best products. Um, I've got the, the Phantom 3 standard, which is basic enough for me. I've had a couple of other drones in the past which were pretty much terrible, but it's good to sort of start with a crappy drone, crash it a few times, then you get used to these ones and obviously you take more care of it because obviously it's, it's a lot of money that you're gonna invest and put up in the air. And if it falls down or into the water, you, you're pretty much screwed. You've lost all your money from your investment. But you know the biggest thing that actually was launched a couple of days ago was the DJI Mavic Air. Now this one pretty much seems to be the one in between from the Spark to the Mavic Pro. It's in between those two right there. But the cool thing about the Mavic Air is that it folds up and it actually folds up smaller than the DJI Spark. Now I don't wanna run through too much of the specs because there are that many videos out there now about the Mavic Air um, with the specs because it's just going crazy. It's probably one of the biggest things that DJI has brought out because they keep bringing out new drones every couple of months, which obviously is, keeps the industry fresh. The good thing about the drone, it has a three axis gimbal, but it's also, it's encased. So with the Mavic Pro, the, the gimbal was actually a little bit exposed and it, jiggles around and there are a lot of people actually returning the Mavic because uh, the gimbal would actually fail. Now this one is actually inside and it's just a perfect design. People were saying, hey, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. And DJI has actually listened and produced a product that the consumers actually want. The good thing is, is you can shoot 1080 at 120 frames per second. So you can do super slow-mo, it's absolutely awesome but obviously you can also shoot at 4k as well one of the downsides about the mavic air is that it only has 21 minutes flight time and that's obviously if it's not windy conditions but the biggest thing about flight times is that you should be able to get your shots within five to ten minutes anyway i mean unless you're looking for the best advantage point or the best image what you're actually looking for in some sort of landscape or uh, i suppose subject you could get it in a shorter time, so you don't necessarily need the extra flight time. I mean, most people get the fly more combo, which gives you more batteries anyway. But, you know, if you don't have any more batteries, then 21 minutes should be sufficient to get what kind of footage, whatever you want. Now, is this drone, who is this drone for? That's, that's what this video is about, is who are the drones for? Because the DJI has released, obviously, the, the Mavic range, the Spark, now the Mavic Air. Um, and then obviously the Phantoms. The shit thing about the Phantoms is that it is a pain in the ass to travel with. Now I've been to a couple of cities in Australia, traveling with this in my bag, and obviously my big suitcase, and it takes up pretty much two thirds of my suitcase. That is annoying. Obviously with the Spark, it is so small, it's pretty much the size of an iPhone that you can pack away you know, in a backpack. The same thing with the Mavic and the Mavic Air is that you can actually pack it away so much better. It's great for traveling. But then when you get to the Phantom 4 Pro, you've got a 20 megapixel one inch sensor. That's gonna give you incredible images. Um, but the size of it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, when you've got something this size here in comparative to like, imagine this was a spark, it's, you just can't travel with this, it's just crazy. I mean, you can make it work. You can obviously make it work, but you know, each their own of how they want to travel, especially if you are doing domestic flights, you don't necessarily want to bring suitcases everywhere, you just want a backpack. And the good thing about the Mavic Air is that it folds up so small that you can actually put it in a backpack. With the remote controller as well, the remote controller folds up, you can take out the, um, the joystick parts so it doesn't get stuck. Um, in your pockets or anything, depending on how you want to store it. For the price of $7.99 um, American dollars, it's, it's not bad priced. I mean, it's a little bit less than the Mavic, so a couple more hundred bucks and you can actually buy the Mavic Pro, which would probably be a little bit better depending on what you want it for. The good thing or the big difference about the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air, the sensor on the back because 
imagine, imagine this, you're, you're flying the drone backwards, you're gonna get an image pulling away from the subject and you fly into something behind you because you, you, you're looking at the screen and you can't actually see. I mean, legally you're supposed to look at the drone. Um, it's, it, the drone's supposed to be in sight. Um, but sometimes you just don't see like a branch or something and boom, straight into the branch, drones on the floor. With this one, it has sensors um, behind. So if you are doing that, it won't just stop. It'll actually go around the subject, around the obstacle. That's the one I was looking for, obstacle, subject, whatever. Anyway, the, the one big thing about this though is it doesn't use the radio frequency. So obviously there's gonna be less range for that. Signals can actually drop out with the Wi-Fi. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest things that I found with uh, the Phantom is at the end of the day when I was flying it, there was actually a train that went past and my screen completely cut out. I couldn't see anything. I didn't know where the drone was. It was way up in the air. Um, eventually I found it because I pressed go home and it hovered directly above me. Um, but flying it back because <laughs> annoyingly, above me I was shaded, all trees. Just imagine there was just all trees above me. I stupidly flew it through a gap and then up. So obviously to land, I'd have to fly it back through that gap. That was the hard part. But eventually I landed it, which was lucky. Um, but yeah, that's one of the bad things about the Wi-Fi frequency at times, um, especially with the, uh, the Phantom, standard, uh, Phantom 3 standard S, the signal's not as good as obviously the Phantom 4 Pro. Obviously, if you are a DJI Spark owner, you would actually realize that it's actually a really good camera, but it only has a two axis gimbal. That's the thing, the Spark was very small for traveling, only had the two axis gimbal, and it only shot in 1080p at uh, 60 frames or 30 frames per second. Um, I don't know, it only shot in 1080p, it didn't do 2.7K or 4K. Um, so that was a big difference between the Spark and the Mavic. Now that the Mavic Air is there, you've got that little bit in between, which gives you that 4K at three axis gimbal. But, you know, for the price of $399 for a Spark, hey, this could be your first drone, why not? Um, it's small, it's very, very quiet. In comparison to the Phantoms, the Phantoms are loud as hell, um, especially if you wanna be a little bit sneaky and go into spots where there are people around, obviously 30 meters away from people in Australia is what you have to be. You, you don't wanna draw attention. Sometimes it just look, feels a bit strange when you're trying to draw, when you're trying to fly the drone up into the air, it draws a little bit of attention. If you had the spark zzz, straight up into the air. Um, actually with the spark, you can fly off your palm. Uh, with the Mavic Air, you can't actually fly up there, but it's very similar to the Pro, so you have to put it on the floor or wherever and then take off from there. With the DJI Phantom series, they are generally based at people who want slightly better image and stability. They're obviously stronger drones, so if there is really windy conditions, it can hold a really steady image. So there are a lot of videos out there that actually show the difference between the, um, the dynamic range. A lot of people believe dynamic range is better in the Phantoms because of the one inch sensor. You can probably check out a couple of other videos. I don't have one, so you'll have to check out someone else's video of the image quality there. So it, it's purely up to you and what you wanna buy. Just make sure you do the research in what drone you are actually, or what drone you actually need, really. Um, my opinion, the best options would be to go for like the Spark, the Mavic Air or the Mavic Pro. The Phantoms, they're just so big that you just, you can't take them anywhere. They do produce better quality images, but for the, the size, you know, I just can't justify bringing this thing around. It's just, it is so annoying carting this around everywhere, but just for the price, you know, it was cheap to, to get the kind of images that I wanted. At the end of the day, now take this away, at the end of the day, doesn't come down to what equipment you use, it comes down to how creative you are. That's probably one of the biggest things in the film, TV, photography industry, is that you have to be creative. You can't just buy the best gear and expect to be the best. You could have the spark, you could have some real shitty 
drone that cost a couple hundred bucks and still get, actually that's a lie, you probably wouldn't because of the image quality, blah, 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 blah. But let's just say for instance, you have the Spark in comparison to Mavic Pro. You could do just as good work with the Spark than the Mavic Pro. It all depends on how creative you are and how good you are at putting the pieces together and getting the correct angles and, and footage that you want. Obviously the quality is different, but sometimes at the end of the day, it's not about the image quality, it's about the, the image that you're capturing, the creativeness. So just details below, I'm gonna put some links with the Phantom series, I'm gonna put the links with the, uh, the Spark, the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro, and you can see the specifications on that and decide for yourself. But if you are a traveler, you just wanna capture some cool images, you know, just for yourself, go for the Spark, it's cheap as chips. Or you could just go a little bit more and go for the Mavic Air. Obviously the Mavic Pro is really expensive. If you're just a hobbyist, you probably don't need a Mavic Pro. Um, but if you do want to go just a little bit all out, hey, why not? It's, it's a freaking awesome drone. You may as well. It actually, it has the LCD screen on the, um, the, the remote, whereas the Mavic Air unfortunately doesn't. All right. Thanks guys. That's the video on the drones. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't and watch out for my next videos. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Shh. <sniffs>